name is Christian Lopez. If you've been to my channel before, welcome back. And if you haven't, welcome. Hopefully I have some good content that you guys can enjoy. Uh, in today's video, I am going to be showing you guys a tour of my tool wall. I call it my tool wall because 85% of my tool or 85% of my wall in my garage is filled up with my toolboxes. Um, I have another toolbox in the corner over here that I'm not going to show because it's literally broken down. There's stuff all over on top of it unorganized, so we're not going to go through the toolbox over there, but we are going to be going through my uh, Craftsman Toolbox, Husky, Harbor Freight, Snap-on, and Craftsman. Now just to kind of start off with the boxes, again, I just said we have a top uh, Snap-on box with a Craftsman bottom. This is a Harbor Freight Series 2 toolbox that I actually took the top off of it. Originally it had that top um, that's riveted onto the box itself. And I drilled out all the rivets, took the shocks off of it, and then threw it away. Because this is my garage at my house. I don't need a top for it. I don't need a locket. And this picture of my car fit perfectly in here. So no need to have that top on it. Um, here we have a large Husky toolbox. I don't know. It's been, I've had it for a while. It was my grandfather's beforehand. And then over here I have two Craftsman boxes. Now with these two two Craftsman boxes that we have right here, these are actually two uh, rolling carts and they're not supposed to be stacked, so I wouldn't recommend doing it at home, but I made it to be stackable because I didn't want to have two short boxes, I'd rather have a tall box uh, that went next to this one. All I did was I removed the casters on the bottom and then had to bend in all the bottom uh, sides of this box because it wouldn't fit on top of this inside the little lip. So I bent the bottoms all in with a hammer and then drilled four spots left and right and then in the back as well, put bolts through it, eight millimeter bolts and torqued it down. So these boxes are basically fused together with those bolts. So it's not coming apart. So those are the boxes that I have. Uh, I'll start off with going on, on top what I have in this box because this is all just random little stuff that I've kind of thrown on top here. Got a few model cars that I've built. We got a 68 Camaro, 72 Chevelle, R34. And we have this old Chevy right here, which let me see, this is a cat, no, this is a Cadillac. What Cadillac is this? Oh, this is the Eldorado. Okay, little Cadillac Eldorado. That wasn't a model car, but it was given to me by my grandfather. This is the original block that I had in my 350Z that blew up on me for no reason. So this is just a little remembrance item I have. Um, <laughs> as well as a official league baseball that I threw out in Little League when I opened up the year uh, back in like 2012. I threw the first pitch and chucked the ball with me. And then I have this little guy right here, little stuffed animal, stuffed animal that my wife gave me at the time when she was my girlfriend. Uh, but yeah, let's actually get to the insides of the toolboxes as well as the tools, because that's what you're all here for. But I just figured I'd give you guys a little backstory, some stuff. Uh, so yeah, let's hop right into this Craftsman box over here first. Also, I have the American flag as well as the flags of the world and then the POW, MIA flag. Uh, my great-grandfather was a prisoner of war in the Bataan Death March, so I liked having that flag as well as the American flag because I'm an American and I also have the American flag tattooed on me at all times right there. But uh, let's get into this box. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show my face and the tools at the same time because kind of close up and high, but we'll see how it works. Uh, but right in this toolbox right here, starting up up top, is basically I just have a whole bunch of spare um, pap, pipe taps as well as tap and die tools. I actually have two complete uh, max sets. These are just kind of the extras that I've gotten over time. You know, with some of these sets, uh, some of the cheaper end versions of the sets, the insides of the dies and taps will break down. So once they do and I get rid of the other stuff, I kind of just throw the extras in here. These are uh, two different small sets. And then I have my larger pipe taps, which I really don't use very often. They're gigantic. I think I've only used one or two of these before, but it's good just to have. You never know when you need something that big, but uh, that's that. Uh, as we go down into this box here, now this is the box with all of my electrical tools. You see in here we have, uh, I have like three different drills. I have a 90 degree angle drills as well as just some standard uh, drills. We have some dribbles, rotary tools, heat gun. I have my test light in here, a little engraver, 
as well as some test lights and probes that we got in here. So this is just where I keep most of my corded stuff. I also have some stuff that's in the original boxes in my other workbench. That's all we got for that. In here, I keep a compression tester, exacto tool kit. Uh, we have a probe, a camera probe, that way I can get into some tiny little spaces and see what's going on, as well as a brake bleeding kit right here. This is, oh my goodness, okay. This is all of my extra wrenches that I don't have places to organize them. Uh, I need to go through and organize all these. I got various sets. I mean, we got Matco, Craftsman, Gear Wrench, Pittsburgh, uh, Benchtop, Blackhawk, a whole bunch of random sets that I haven't gone through the process of organizing yet. I need to do it, but I don't have the tool organizers, so I'm on a budget a little bit right now. Once I get those, then I'll be able to organize these in my box. I even have Harley Davidson wrenches. I got, I got so much stuff in here that just needs to get organized. But I just throw it all in here because I already have sets in my other toolboxes, which you guys will see. But let's get down to the bottom half of this toolbox. Nothing too crazy, but let's check it out. Now in this bottom half of the toolbox, I have electrical terminals, connectors, basic things that you need to use for electrical. Right in here, won't, I don't really need to open them up, but you guys can tell. Just, just an assortment of connectors and terminals. In here, I have a few more things. Uh, I have a caliper, I have a caliper, and this is my caliper, the Fowler, I think it's my Fowler caliper. Uh, differential cylinder pressure tester, another tap and die set, as well as another brake, brake bleeder. And then basically these two drawers are just a whole bunch of ratchet straps. So you don't need to look in there, just ratchet straps and ratchet straps. Well, let's move over to the toolboxes that actually have most of my tools that are more entertaining. These, this box right here is pretty simple with uh, nothing too crazy in it. Now moving on to the snap-on toolbox. Up top here I have two first aid kits because you never know when you need them. I mean, well, when you're a mechanic you always need them, but you don't usually use them until when you're done with the job because band-aids just get in the way and get caught on things. So might as well let your skin get caught on those things. Um, <laughs> but you got two first aid kits. Have some mirrors, uh, little Mac mirrors, Husky mirrors to see in certain places that you can't get to, uh, as well as random blocks, tape measures, WD-40, battery corrosive, battery corrosion preventative, um, as well as some screwdrivers in here. And these three are already empty, so I don't need to go through there, just they're empty. As you go through the top right here, I have just some random lug nuts that I removed off of other people's cars that they didn't need, they didn't want, and I was replacing them with other things. Random spark plugs, more lug nuts, coilover tool, Nissan alignment tool, feeler gauges for an engine. And here I just have my chisels and my little spatulas that I never really use, as well as uh, files. Same in here, I just have a whole bunch of files. This is actually a knife sharpener. And then small little files and specialty tools. Over here, I have a little Kila coil set because I can't find the original packaging, so I'm just keeping everything together in one little square. And then in here, your standard brushes, you never know when you need brushes to clean off stuff. That's that. This toolbox right here, we got these four top drawers. These two are empty, so we're not going to worry about that. But right here, I have a few punches as well as some heavy duty chisels that I can use if I need them. And then basically, I'm just going to say most of this toolbox right here is all pliers. Um, right here is where I keep all of my Loctite, all of my uh, gasket maker, electrical um, flux and yeah, RTV silicone. Some of the basic stuff that isn't in cans that I can just keep in here. All my can stuff is on my workbench. And then pretty much all through here, I'm just gonna show you. We got various pliers, dikes, adjustables here, here, more of them. Here, more of them. We got <laughs> big old pipe wrench oil filter wrench, vice grips, dikes. These are great. Okay, these are actually amazing when you're trying to bleed a radiator and you don't want all of the radiator fluid coming out of the radiator hose and you just want to clamp it off. This thing works awesome. You basically just squeeze down and it'll hold in that position. 
and then when you just push, lets it go. Works really well, and because it's such a large surface, it's gonna keep from damaging those radiator hoses. I love this tool. They sell them at Harbor Freight. Um, this is a Mac set right here. I spent like 40 bucks for one of them because Mac, Snap-on, all those places charge insane amounts of money for tools. Down here we have all of our adjustable wrenches right here, some more vice grips. We obviously got the big ones because you never know when you need to get a gigantic 36 millimeter nut off and you can't use a socket. And then down here is where I keep all of my tools for my Milwaukee and my drills. I have multiple different drill sets. And then all over here and then all of these are just the quick release uh, hex 3 8 socket pieces. So you basically put these in all of your impact drills. And then down below is empty. And then this one has my multi-use transfer pump and some more helicoil stuff as well as a stud polar, two stud polar sets. Uh, just basic little things. Let's move over to the uh, series two box right now. I'm trying to go this a little, trying to go through this a little bit quickly because I've made tool vi toolbox videos where it's like 20 minutes long for one toolbox and I don't wanna keep you guys around for 40 minutes. I don't think you guys want that. So I'm going a little bit quickly here, uh, but if you have any questions on any of the tools that I do have in any of my boxes, how I organize, you wanna make fun of me, whatever it is, just let me know in the comments. But uh, let's move over to this Harbor Freight box. Now this toolbox is uh, not full right now. I do need to fill it up. Uh, basically on top, I just have my two Milwaukee impact drivers right here with the hex quick release, snap on the stuff and use it well. Um, I actually have two more Milwaukee tools that are currently at my house that I'm using to put stuff up for the wife. Have some batteries here. This is for obviously this battery right there. Bam. But I also have four or five of these batteries, which are the M18s, which you use for these tools right here. Although all of mine are dead and I misplaced my charger. So make sure you keep your place organized. I can't find the charger anywhere, so I can't even use this tool, which is really irritating. Right here, I have the Snap-on Tectonic, Tech, tech Handle, what is this called? Tech, tech Angle Torque Wrench. This thing is amazing. Oh my goodness. So this is an electric torque wrench here. They are expensive, but they work wonders. Oh, I took the batteries out. Never mind. Well, this torque wrench is freaking awesome. I have it in the half inch and three eighths. Oh no, the batteries are just dead. Oh, that's why the battery is dead. That's why I didn't use it. Yeah, I gotta replace those batteries. Um, but basically this torque wrench is freaking amazing. Um, it will do torque angle so you can set it to 90 degrees you can zero it and basically take it 90 degrees it'll light up um red orange yellow green so it'll show you once you're getting to that torque angle or if you're going to 50 foot pounds it'll show it the lines on how close you're getting it'll vibrate once you hit it and make a beep um, and it'll also show you digitally the foot pounds inch pounds newton meters everything right on the screen you can adjust it freaking awesome i love these tools I use the three eighths more often than the half inch, but oh my God, they're, they're awesome uh, for working on things. Up here, I just have a few basic random specialty tools, seal puller, uh, two bender, spark plug kit, uh, compression ring or to, to compress the rings on pistons, a uh, little brake set so you can push out those, push the piston in. And then I'm pretty sure we're empty all through here, except for here, I have my two larger breaker bars, as well as another snap-on torque wrench right here, and then a little Harbor Freight uh, Pittsburgh quarter inch torque wrench. And uh, this right here is awesome. This is a Craftsman tool. I'll actually show you guys the part number. Where is it at? Because, right, you guys can see it. You may not be able to. Uh, part number is 41831AE. It's a 3 8 breaker bar right here, but it's so thin. Sometimes you need to get in that tight spot with a snub, a snub socket on it, and you can't fit a ratchet through. This thing just works awesome to basically just get in that tight spot, break that piece open, and then use your hands through it. So I love that little thing right there. That's awesome. And then down here, down below, adjust this camera one more time. 
is where I keep all my air tools. Now, I don't normally I don't normally use air tools in my garage. I do have a Husky uh, 55 gallon air compressor, but I usually just use my Milwaukee uh, cordless tools. And then when I need to use, you know, air tools, I will. Um, but we've got a little cutoff wheel as well as a whole bunch of air guns, little vacuum, half inch, three eighths, uh, have a little sander right here. Although this is my favorite air tool that I own. This is a Harbor Freight Earthquake XT. If you haven't seen the video, I'll put the link in the description at the end. I compared this thing to the, the Matco. This thing blows the Matco out of the water and it's half the price. This thing has been worked pretty hard and it still is amazing. It's, I love this. This is the half inch snub nose earthquake XT impact driver and I freaking love this gun. It's awesome. But uh, yeah, freaking awesome. Love that thing. Little air hammer as well. But uh, now let's get to the main event. I saved this toolbox for last because this is this toolbox that has all of my main things. Pretty much when I'm working on a car, I come to this toolbox for all my tools. The rest of this is mostly storage. Um, it's various things that I have. I mean, I have a toolbox pretty much filled with all pliers, which I can throw all of that in literally one drawer and just pile it on top of each itself. But I like things to be a little bit laid out better. Um, but yeah, let's get to this toolbox, which is my main toolbox that I have all of my tools in. Uh, starting off up top, let me just move the camera over and I can show you guys what we got. So starting off up top, we do have the <laughs> drawer that every mechanic should have, which is the spare parts, spare socket, spare bolts, spare everything. Basically, when you take a bolt off and you replace it with something else, you throw everything in here. Every single mechanic needs one of these boxes with various random bolts, nuts, washers, all that crap because you never know when you just need something random and you can find it in here. Uh, and I actually have two of these drawers because I need a lot. Although this is mostly actually for the uh, Nissan Nissan bolts and washers and everything. Uh, kind of separate them apart when I was taking apart motors and trannies and starters and uh, all that type of stuff. This is pretty much all only Nissan. Uh, so I just kind of separated them apart and had them here because it, it makes things easier when I'm working on a Nissan and I know I need, oh, I need this right here and I have it. Okay, dropping things. Urgh, what's going on here? There we go. If we go one lower, we have my main ratchet and extensions drawer. This drawer gets opened pretty much the most out of any of my drawers. I have half inch, three eighths, quarter inch ratchets as well as a variety of extensions. And then in the corner over here, I have uh, different adapters from half inch to three fourths, from three fourths to an inch, from an inch to three fourths, quarter to three, uh, all, the, all the extensions you need, as well as a few uh, wobble sockets right here, just like so. You got the little quarter inch because you never know when you need them. Um, but yeah, that's my extensions, wobbles, ratchets, all the basic crap. I got Craftsman, I got Harbor Freight, Snap-on, just whatever you gotta use, you use. I, I'm not too big on sticking with one main brand because I just have a variety of so much, it doesn't even matter. This one is pretty bland. As you can see, there's pretty much a American set of gear wrench, ratcheting wrenches. Can't even hear that ratchet, so quiet. It's actually really quiet for a ratcheting wrench. I never noticed that. But I never use these because I mostly work on Japanese vehicles, so I don't usually use the American stuff, as well as what I call the speed wrench. Just That's that. <laughs> One further, and then we have a few more American wrenches, uh, Craftsman Snap-on. Again, I don't really use these, but I have them just in case I need them. To the right over here, up top, oh, actually, I'm not gonna open these two, but these are actually both uh, just my boxes for receipts for tools. I like to keep some of that stuff because it, it doesn't hurt to have it, to catalog. Up here, just have some random crow's feet that came from, I think this is like two two different sets. Um, these are, don't know who makes these ones, and then these ones are Craftsman. Craftsman, Armstrong USA, and then a random set. Don't really use these, but sometimes you need to, get into a spot where this is all you can get and you need to break that all apart. So they're good to have. This is my nail and glove set where I keep my nails and my gloves. So 
Super basic, don't really need to get descriptive about that. One more below, this is where I keep my larger sockets. Uh, basically anything 26 and bigger. Uh, it's just really one or two different sets of uh, six point and 12 point of the larger sockets. Cause you never know when you need them. These are all half inch. And I just keep them in here to separate them apart. And this one's actually a three fourths inch. Uh, but yeah, just the bigger sockets. Now the main drawer, which is the largest drawer that I have in here is where I keep all of my sockets. Open this thing up and some of my wrenches. Now, as you can see right here, I have a mountain set, which is the set that Snap-on sells of the uh, flex head ratcheting wrenches. These things are honestly really awesome. Sometimes you just need to get into a spot where you also need to be able to, you can only hit it like this. And it works really well just to be able to get in those different areas where you need them. I like using these tools a lot. They work really well, lifetime warranty. So in case you snap them because you're using them wrong, take them to the snap-on truck and get new ones. I'm not saying I do that. I'm just saying I've heard about that. We'll leave it at that. Um, and then most of these uh, sockets that I have in here are gonna be all metric. I do have a few uh, American sets though. American, 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 uh, and then metric, 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 all metric. Uh, we got our half inch, six points. We have our three eighths, uh, six points, 12 points, some six points, make sure 12 points, hex uh, set up as well as a variety of random uh, three eighths. And down here in the bottom, we have our quarter inch little set. I am missing these ones right here. I don't know where these ones went. I'm still looking for them. I hope to find them one day. Uh, <laughs> but you never know when you need to use a 4.5 socket. It's so tiny, but trust me, I've came across um, track cars with aerospace grade nuts on the wings and they use these tiny little freaking nuts that weigh nothing. And uh, you gotta use it. And then in here, I just have the various 19 and 21 millimeter sockets that you use for your wheels, uh, spark plugs, spark plug uh, socket. And then these are actually really cool. Uh, these are made by Snap-on. Now, I like these because sometimes you get in a tight spot on the engine and you need to get the, the nut off without it falling into the engine. Right there, you see that? It's got a spring-loaded magnet. So when you need to get into a small little area, this isn't a 12, but, and it will compress down pretty far to where you need to get that bolt out or that nut out. And then when you go to pull it, it stays on and it's pretty strong. Well, that fell on the floor, but <laughs> it works pretty well. Um, I like it. I have a 12 millimeter and a 10 millimeter in these and I hope to get the, actual, the eight millimeter and 13 soon. But they're good to have because uh, sometimes you just need to be able to get that nut off without it falling off when you loosen it. And that's, okay. That's pretty cool. I like it. And then I do have the uh, Mac swivel sockets. I don't use these very often, but sometimes they do come in handy where you want to be able to use a, uh, let's see right here, a 19 millimeter socket. And then let's say you had a uh, three eight swivel right here, grab that, and you go, okay, hopefully that's short enough to get in that space, but you can see the difference in length. There's definitely a, a good half inch in length difference, and sometimes that half inch makes it to where this tool isn't gonna work, and this one will. So I, I really like using these little wobble sets. They don't come in handy that often, but when you do need them, you need them, and that's why I have them. I mean. That's why all mechanics can have a variety of so many different tools is because you don't exactly need everything for one car, but you may need everything else for a different car. Uh, but as we go further on in this toolbox, we're dropping down now into the bottom drawers. I do have my Allen sets. None of these are organized. So if I need a four millimeter Allen, I gotta go, okay, hopefully there's a four millimeter. I think it's gonna be this one right here. Take a look at it and go, nope, that's 7 64ths. Makes it difficult because you're not organized, but I do have them all here, both American and metric. I haven't separated these things apart, which I may end up having to do because 
Sometimes it takes a while to find the right Allen. An empty tray. So this is gonna be maybe where I put metric and American Allens. We'll see how that goes. Down here, I keep a whole bunch of various pliers. You can see right here for those, uh, I can't remember, I, I don't know why I can't remember what they're called. The, the, the eye clips that go inside like a, on pistons. You have them on the, on the inside of a piston where it meets up with the shell. Okay. Well, we got those. We have some wire cutters, crimps, um, and a whole bunch of other various pliers. We have some flux paste right here, which leads us to the next drawer, which is my zip ties, alligator clips, random electrical wiring, and my fluke multimeter, as well as this is just a random uh, GB instruments meter as well. And we got that solder to solder wires, although I usually like using uh, Deutsch connectors. Deutsch connectors are amazing, although they're really expensive. Deutsch connectors are freaking awesome for, for track cars, or even to replace a stock connector. Deutsch connectors are amazing, um, but they're really expensive, so most of the time I am either soldering or crimping things. Lower, we have a just a various little box of random sets, American swivels, and some Allen sets. Uh, we have some little 12 points, uh, another swivel set, American. And uh, this, this is just various crap that I never use, but sometimes if I need them, they're already in a kit together. So it's good to have. Now down here is empty, nothing in it other than some extra mats. Over to the left side though, uh, we are starting off with my metric wrench sets. Uh, we got a little Matco set right here. I'm missing the 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench, which is really irritating. I'm trying to find it right now. It's somewhere in the shop. As everyone knows, the 10 millimeters are always the ones that go first. So it's very sad that it's not in my box right now. I'm continuing to look for it and we'll see what happens. And then I have a Craftsman non-ratcheting non -ratcheting wrench set, as well as the larger ratcheting wrenches, 20, 22, 24. This one right here is actually a 12.38 uh, set Matco, and I'm missing the 8, 10, and 14, which perfect are usually for the Nissans. As you can tell, I work on Nissans because I'm missing those ones. <laughs> Down here is where I keep all of my screwdrivers, uh, various screwdrivers, as well as pry bars. You never know what screwdrivers you need. Sometimes you need ones that are insanely, insanely, insanely short, and then sometimes you need the long ones. So just the various sets. I even actually, I even have a, this actually shouldn't be in here. I have a wrench right here. This actually goes in my other toolbox. So let me move that over right now. Look at that. Doing some organizing during the video. Perfect. Uh, and then I have some Matco pry bars and then some big flathead uh, screwdrivers if you ever need it. Although this, you can actually just use this as a pry bar. My goodness, you don't need even, I don't know what you'd fit on that head. That thing is gigantic, but uh, yeah. This is my screwdriver case. This is my hammer's drawer. Hammer's drawer, whenever you need a hammer, there's multiple hammers in here. And this is so cute actually. I don't know what this is for, but I found this in my shop one day. I didn't buy it, but I think it was my grandpa's. Um, so you got a little tiny brass hammer and then you screw this out. And you got a little screwdriver. And then you screw this out and you have a tinier screwdriver and then <laughs> I'm not joking you, you see this and then you screw this out and you have a really tiny one I don't know why or what this was originally made for but it's so cute I mean look at this little thing it's so tiny and then it goes inside the other one and screws in and then it goes inside the other one nope oh, and then Screws in, and then goes inside the hammer. Is there another thing right here? <gasps> What's in here? Oh my God, I actually, wait, what is this? <gasps> Dude, how did I not know that there was another one? Is there another one there? No, there isn't. Oh, and there's another one. This is actually really cool. Wow, okay. I just learned that there's actually a larger one. I was looking at it, wait a second. There's another one right there, so wow. That's a cool little hammer. Yeah, I don't think I know one. But don't, I've never used this before, but I have it. That's cool. Tiny little screwdrivers, big screwdrivers, all that crap. 
Now this is the, uh, another one of those I need to organize boxes. Now these are all American sockets right here. All American. Um, and then also like the various like Phillips sockets and Allen's, but pretty much all American. And since I don't use American tools, I don't really, I haven't had the need to organize these to use them. But as I begin to work on more vehicles, I'm going to have to organize these. So both this drawer and the wrench drawer are going to need to get organized very soon to fill in more space in my toolboxes. But yeah, a variety of everything. And then down below, oh, it's just empty with random crap and trash. I forgot about that. That's just, that's just trash. But uh, <laughs> that is my toolbox tour, ending off with trash. Uh, let me get you guys lifted up. And then I am a movie guy. These were my father's. Uh, when my parents were together, they had their entire house was covered in uh, movie posters signed by the actors. And uh, he passed these two down to me. And I have another castaway one in the corner. But uh, this right here is one of my favorite all-time movies. I love this movie. Uh, Moulin Rouge with the Pope Kevin and Ewan McGregor. Uh, freaking awesome. I love this thing. So this is one of my favorite movie posters. I like it. I actually just put this up today. And then who doesn't know Forrest Gump? So we got Forrest Gump uh, movie poster with a few of the actors' signatures. And uh, originally, I had nothing on this wall, really. So this entire wall, which is about uh, 25 feet, will be all movie themed. So I'm actually going to be putting up multiple posters here, here, two more down below, and then basically throw it all down the bottom. So I have a whole bunch of movie posters on the wall because I like them. They're cool. But, uh, yeah, that is my toolbox tour. Uh, hope you guys liked it. The last time I made a toolbox tour, it got a whole bunch of views and I wasn't too sure why it was just me showing off my toolbox. And I figured, you know what, if you guys like it, that was one toolbox. That was this toolbox only. So being able to show off all my, all my toolboxes, uh, and just kind of show you guys what I have and how I organize things. Uh, maybe you guys would like it. If you don't definitely feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have an awesome week uh, and stay tuned for another video coming up. I'm going to be releasing a video on lowering Miata. Why does it need to be lowered? It's already low as it is. I don't know. Maybe to make it look a little better and ride a little bit worse. We'll see. Thank you guys again for watching. Have an amazing day. And as always, please make sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, and share. At the end of the video, which is going to be about 10 seconds, there'll be a picture up of this with a few uh, click-through videos you guys can watch if you want. Uh, so yeah. Bye, guys.